Welcome to the Hunter Survival Leveling Guide. In this guide, we will go over pros and cons of leveling as survival, ability overview, ability rotation and preparation, gearing, equipment, and pets. So without further ado, let's get started. One of the pros of leveling up as survival is they use little to no ammunition. On top of that, an ammunition bag is not needed and could easily be replaced with a regular bag, allowing for extra storage other than just ammunition. Two additional advantages that the survival hunter has while leveling up is higher than normal melee damage. Versus other hunters that are leveling up, melee damage tends to be their weak zone. On top of that, the dead zone for the hunter as survival is very manageable as opposed to other hunters. Another advantage of survival is that near end content, depending on your equipment, you're able to off tank certain mobs in certain instances. But with enough equipment, who knows, one day you might be able to do more than just off tank certain mobs and dungeons and instances. Perhaps one day you could be tanking something much bigger. One of the cons for the survival hunter is slower range attack speed anywhere from 10 to 15% drop depending on what bag you're missing, but can be easily be fixed by just equipping it beforehand. There's also a marginally less uh, DPS output from range and no true shot aura. Aspect of the Monkey is a spell that increases the hunter's dodge rating by 8%. It could also be further improved with Improved Aspect of the Monkey, overall increasing your dodge rating up to 13%. Aspect of the Hawk increases the hunter's range attack power. When improved, through the talent tree that is, it can also increase the speed at which he can attack. Up next, Aspect of the Cheetah basically increases the movement speed of the hunter by 30% when on foot, but also has the drawback of being dazed for 4 seconds. Aspect of the Pack is essentially the same thing as Aspect of the Cheetah. Just slightly more expensive and the buff gets shared with all of your party members, including the days. Up next is Aspect of the Wild. Increases your nature resistance by 60 points at max rank. So it should reduce nature damage or at least resist from you obtaining nature damage. And last but not least is Aspect of the Beast. Basically makes you untrackable to other players that can track humanoids by turning you into a beast. All traps have to be placed while out of combat. In this case we have a freezing trap. Freezing traps are very basic, keeps your opponent frozen in place. Next is the frost trap, great for kiting multiple enemies around or just slowing down a group of enemies. Then we have the emulation trap, great for enemies that are weak to fire damage. And after this is the explosive trap, great for multiple enemies taking a large amount of damage in the beginning and doing an AoE damage at the end. All these traps can be enhanced in talent trees through survival. Now let's move on to tracking. A hunter has eight essential skills of tracking, including beast, humanoid, hidden, Undead, Giants, Dragonkin, Demons, and Elementals. These are very essential skills for hunters in order to track many things out in the wild or to help identify certain objects in the world. Whether they're disguised as humans but are actually demons, who knows? Maybe this will become useful one day. Let's talk about our defensive spells. First things first, we have turrets. 
Deterrence is a great spell. It's on a five minute cooldown and increases your dodge and parry dramatically. There are other spells out there through your talents that help aid your survival skills. But overall, Deterrence is a pretty good OMG move. And when that fails, there's always Faint Death. Faint Death will always reset the fight. It'll put you out of combat. And it can be improved upon through the talent tree. Now, don't get confused. These aren't the only skills and abilities that can help maintain your defenses up and keep you alive. There's several other combinations of abilities and spells that will keep you up and going. So just keep that in mind. When it comes to the Hunter's offensive abilities, they can deal damage at range and melee, both physical and magic. Spell damage in the form of nature, fire, and arcane type. Physical damage like Raptor Strike and Aim Shot. Some of the examples of spells are Serpent Sting, Emulation Trap, Arcane Shot. Damage dealt is dependent on your spec, talent, equipment, and to an extension, your state of situation. These are a few examples of the offensive abilities the Hunter carries in his arsenal. The Hunter has plenty of utility. I will try to cover them as fast and as quickly as possible. If you would like, you can pause the video at any time. With this, you distract your target. That's it. Removes a frenzy effect, usually from a raid boss. Increases attack power to the party. Disorientates a target for 4 seconds. Reduces strength and agility on a target. Burns the mana of a target. Before combat starts, it puts the target to sleep and then hurts them afterwards. Increases range attack power versus that target. Fears a beast. Slows an enemy up close. Slows an enemy from afar. Reveals stealthy characters. Pretend to be dead. Mind control your own pet. Become a zoologist. Unlimited visibility of the entire freaking map. Piss off your pet and make it do more damage. Now you're shooting way faster. As mentioned before, if you need to go back and pause the video and read a spell, please do so. So before we get started with the Hunter's ability rotation and preparation, we must first choose what path we will take to level up. We're free to choose whatever path we desire, but for an example, I have made these four paths that I will be following in depth later on. So without any further ado, let me start the introduction with these four paths. Starting with the easiest, Survival Melee with Pet. It's melee heavy, and the Hunter fights shoulder to shoulder with its pet focused on balancing damage between the hunter and the pet. Together, they take down any foe that stands in their way. Now the intermediate difficulty. Survival Burst. Starting with a head-crackling aim shot and ending with a ferocious raptor strike, the hunter makes space between itself and its foes, allowing to repeat the process again, focused on big critical burst damage. Up next is a bit of a hard mode. Survival Melee Solo. The hunter fights head on, not depending on its pet for tanking, but rather tanking itself. Focused on high melee damage, dodge, and parry, this build makes great use of Mongoose Bite and Conquer Attack. Last but not least is the more interesting and mysterious Master Survivalist of Traps and Spells. The hunter leaves behind the agility stat and wishes upon spell power, relying on the power of arcane, nature, and fire. At the start of leveling your hunter, you just want to auto shoot, serpent sting, arcane shoot, and raptor strike your way to level 10, and complete your hunter quest line and obtain your first pet and pet utilities. Then, we can start the rotation and preparation. Survival Melee with Pet can start being enjoyed as early as level 16 with rank 2 Savage Strike, but gets much more refined at around level 42 once you had added 5 points in Unleashed Fury, and pretty much completes most of its form at level 50 once you unlock Intimidation. Up next is uh, Survival Burst. Once Aimshot is unlocked, it starts to be good at level 20. 
at around level 34 and gets easier with entrapment rank 5. The burst gets real at around level 50 once you added all 5 points into lightning reflexes. Survival Melee Solo Difficult start since it takes no real shape until level 26 after you have improved your aspect of the monkey. At around level 38 it becomes better but not as good as once level 40 comes and you learn to use mail. 5 points into lightning reflexes gives you a better shape but overall the leveling experience is dependent on high dodge and crits. And now we have the master survivalist of traps and spells. At level 19 your traps are ready to immobilize targets for 5 seconds. At level 28 you unlock frost trap and take notice that it procs frequently on targets, immobilizing them for more often than usual. By level 54 all of your spells have been modified by the talent tree and you should have a collection of spell power gear from your adventures as you had to convince every caster that you also use their equipment. Proper picking of your gear and equipment makes any build work. Without the proper build and stats on your gear, the build would feel wrong and a sense of missing something. For example, some high-end rare items are more powerful than other high-end epics. So please, take a moment to pause this video and see the stats preference of your chosen path. As it turns out, Every path I made in the survival tree comes with its own recommended pet. Survival melee with pet gets broken tooth, but any beast with fast attack will do. Survival burst, I would recommend a wind serpent for that quick high end damage. Survival melee, solo, any bird with screech, reduced damage taken is great. And for the master survivalist of traps and spells, I recommend the gorilla, you can't go wrong with it. Well, survival is not a conventional way to level up as, but in my opinion, it's more fun than Beast Mastery or Marksman. It's new uncharted and unexplored gameplay. In any case, I believe that survival can be and do much more at high end content than what we are led to believe. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this guide. It might not have been as detailed as I would like it to be, but it covered a lot in a very short amount of time. If you all can, please leave your comments, questions, or concerns in the comment section of the video. And don't forget to like, share, and follow me on Twitch. Thank you all for watching.